So I hope that answered some people's questions. I don't think it answered everybody's questions because there's a lot of questions in the chat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transition from the interview to the Q&A, and I'll answer everybody's questions to the best of my abilities, even though there may be some questions I would like to shy away from, but you can't. You can't shy away from tough questions. you got to go from there. So let's just jump into the Q&A. I start a bunch of them, so let's just go with that. First of all, Roy. 2021 crypto adopter here. Whew, sorry, Roy. Crappy year for you. You advised me to get off crypto off exchange early this year. Not soon after Voyager collapse. Life saving advice. Thanks so much. That's why we do the uh, uh, the rules, of course, right? But to get into Roy's thing is, uh, let's be honest. I didn't warn everybody in time for Celsius. I did it the day of. It was in the morning and 11 o'clock. And then by 9 p.m., the things were shut down. I thought Void or Celsius was up and up, and it was not. Everything works out until it isn't. Everything's cool until it's not. And uh, that's just one of those things. And I still got six figures stuck over there. That's how it is. Voyager, at least I gave you two weeks, but I still have some some crypto stuck over there. And thank God I didn't do anything with FDX. So so here we are. So you got to understand. Take it with a grain of salt. I am not perfect. I get things wrong. I screw things up. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. Okay, says so Trump. <laughs> Trust me, bro. Yeah. And there has been some comments, and it, unfortunately, what it's it's negative and positive for this our market, which is, you know, the Alexes of the world and the Sam Bakeman Freeds of the world. They screwed it up for they didn't screw it up for everybody. They screwed over a lot of people, and it makes us trust less. But is that a bad thing these days? We have to trust less so we don't keep getting rug pulled like what we're having right now. So. I know it's it's awful here. There's a lesson everywhere. And I got to tell you, those things, of course, my scripts too, this leads us to not trusting a lot of people. So that's just how it is. You've got you've to earn it these days. And if you can't earn it, then you're just going to fall by the wayside. And I think, I, I think the exchanges and, and the projects and the programs that, are, that make it through this are the ones that people are going to look for and go, those guys made it after that crappy 2022 year when everything imploded and collapsed what did they do differently oh that's right uh they were honest they they kept a breast situation they didn't make sure that they commingled the funds and used them to buy you know uh their condos and their houses in the bahamas which is what ftx apparently had done they were honest with their customers and they were prudent in their spending and they grew slowly but they were able to do it over time. Anyhow, Jeff Hughes says, slow and steady wins the race. Trust no one. I got to agree here. If you can't hold it besides real estate, you don't own it. And there was another question. I think it was from Nick, Nick Lucal or somebody. They go, Rob, how can you justify with I trust? Because you're always talking about, let me see, hold on. I'm going to hide you for a second, Nick. I'm always, tr I'm always, uh, ah, where am I? Ah, here we go. I'm always talking about uh, these rules, right? And one of those rules is don't leave anything on exchanges. Is I trust not an exchange? It is an exchange. So how can I how can I market with that and say zero percent? Here's the thing: everything, everybody has a risk tolerance. So for me, when I say exchanges, <clears throat> I'm trying to say it, it. I'm trying to say it in the best way that I can I can say it possibly. Don't leave anything on exchanges per se. However, with I trust, it's a retirement account. The principle is I don't want people to take their life savings and all the money they have and then stick it into like another Celsius and leave it there and then get rug pulled. With Again, with iTrust, when I'm talking about those things, no, you don't have control of your keys. No, the, you're not going to be able to do everything on cold storage, you, yourself. However, if things go sideways for whatever reason, even though Kevin just talked about it, he said, look, he goes, we're not going to do loans. We're not going to commingle the funds. We make it very simple. Here's how we generate revenue for our company. It's by fees. It's by the trading fees. And there's a reason I think why, say, a Coinbase and a Kraken and I mean even a Binance is actually up and running and OKX so far is because they did a very simple thing, which is like, look, do you want, do you want this crypto? Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. There's going to be a buyer and a seller, and we're going to charge you a percentage. And that's going to be our fee and that's going to be our revenue generation. It's the same thing with iTrust. If for some reason, some, I don't know, something happens where 
Coinbase Custody, which has all of MicroStrategy's uh, Bitcoin. Correct me in the comment section. I think they have all of it, if not most of it. Then MicroStrategy loses everything. All the different institutions that have all their crypto lose everything. Of course, iTrust goes away because they have it on two places, actually. Uh, Fireblocks, Fireblocks and Coinbase Custody. So when you say those types of things, no, you don't. But it's not going to crush me if I lose that $5,900 something dollars right now in the retirement account. So all oh, that makes sense. And then, where'd I go? Nick says, uh, wow, if I miss a direct loss on a platform, Luna and Celsius wrecked me good. Oh, that said, still filling FTX file, but I'm buying now and I'm going to rise out of the ashes. It's pretty good. It's not a bad way to look at things. It's not easy, though, to come back after that, those beatdowns. Nathan says, I wouldn't trust the iTrust unless I controlled my own keys, which you cannot without setting up a corporation. That is true. A lot of people talking about, well, Rob, what about like a, a pure self-directed IRA? Well, I mean, Digital Asset News is a LLC. So in, in, in a certain way, shape or form, I could actually do that. But then I have to file all the paperwork. Then I have to prove a lot of things. And then the expense could be a little bit higher than what I'm used to. So for me, I'm like, I'm going to balance it out. And just say, I don't want to do that for me. If someone wants to start up their corporation, follow the paperwork, go through the quarterly reports or anything else, you can do that. Or you don't have to do anything. You just sit on your hands and don't say, I don't want this. And that's it. But in this situation, uh, I'm just going to use iTrust and keep it going. Again, not going to crush me if whatever happens. He goes, and then Nathan says, I tried to set up an account with them, but the process seemed quite shady. So I backed out. Everybody's got a different opinion on this one. Like, you can look in the comments and people say, well, I did it. it. worked out pretty well. But for Nathan, it didn't for whatever reason. Like I, from my experience was this. I sat down with the guys for 30 minutes and I'm like, I don't know if I even need this. And they said, well, you might not. This might work for you, but this doesn't work for somebody else. And they laid it out why this could actually be good for me, especially as far as like a Roth IRA, which is post taxes. You know, you, you, you pay something in taxes, you put it into the, to your Roth IRA then it's nine and a half years old, and you can take those things out, which coincidentally is how Peter Thiel do, did it. He took his the stocks in PayPal when they were worth pennies in the dollar and stuck them all in a Roth IRA. Guess how much that's going to be worth when he, when he turns, I think he's almost 60 now. In a couple of years, when he turns almost 60, 59 and a half, it's worth uh, over $5 billion. Now, it may be a little bit of fluctuation, but guess what? That's $5 billion tax-free, and that's the power of the Roth IRA. All right. And then, this is funny, Siboku, Siboku. I smell a centralized shill. Look, uh, these are the tough questions and this is what it is. So as far as like uh, for this one, now remember, I am biased. I use them. They have been, uh, I have affiliate links. You don't have to use the affiliate link. You can go right to iTrust Capital and uh, they are uh, part of the show. So uh, as far as like this centralized centralization, it is centralized. If you don't want to do this, don't do this. This is just what I'm doing. And my goals are not your goals. Uh, Sibuku says Bitcoin is trustless. No need for iTrust capital. Well, I mean, look, if you want to, if you're talking about capital gains tax and you want to put something away as far as like a diversification, like what I do, then it might work out for you. Or you could just go and everybody's different. Like some people say, Rob, I'm not going to do anything with real estate or with my business or with businesses or with stocks. I'm going 100% of Bitcoin. Cool. Do that. Do that. And uh, that's up to you. Uh, you do you and I'll do me. And I'm just trying to bring different options to people uh, for what's out there. Let's see. <laughs> if it connects as I trust nothing. That's, a, that's pretty good. <laughs> Carola says, uh, I, if you continue to trust these people, you're the fool. Yeah, perhaps. So far, so good. Jeff says, absolutely diversification, gold, silver, Bitcoin, a little real estate. At least you resistance, you can swing it. I believe so. And then, uh, well, this is all from Sibuku. Uh, Celsius 2.0. Again, you have to understand where the revenue generation comes from. So the question is then, well, how did Celsius get that yield? Well, they did a bunch of loans, right? Which was double, you know, uh, double collateralized. And then, of course, there was different loans uncollateralized, uncollateralized way to institutional investors. And it was just a big circle. And you could see that uh, they were loaning out three hours capital and three hours capital was loaned to somebody else, then back to Voyager and then back around. And before you knew it, it was all just like a, really a Ponzi, essentially. So 
Celsius is a bad example, I think. Again, how do you generate revenue? Where does your funds come from? Do you commingle? Well, again, 1% for the trading fees and that's it. Heck, over on, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't we looking at uh, between 0.5 and 1.5 for, uh, for uh, Coinbase? I know Coinbase Pro is different, but I could be wrong. And then uh, CL says, why do my API links and CoinLedger often not capture the original cost basis? I have to spend hours sorting through the original purchase at the end. Even more confused, fix this. I will pass it on to David and uh, go from there and uh, see what happens. I personally, when I use uh, CoinLedger, usually everything's pretty well, does pretty well, but there's always a hiccup. Nothing's perfect, right? So when I have an issue, I send them an email. Within 24 to 40 hours, I usually get a response back, and then off I go. Although the last couple of times, I haven't had an issue. Uh, so then, okay. Let's see. And then uh, Navasa says, again, this was the question. How do you reconcile trust holding the keys to your crypto? And you're right against the old saying, that you, which we answered a little bit ago. Again, it's all about what you want to do. I personally am not going to hold anything on exchanges. Exchanges, I trust, is essentially an exchange. However, it is in a cold storage, but you don't have your keys if you don't want to take that risk. I feel between 2 to 3% of my general portfolio is okay of a risk assessment, and I'll be okay. I'm not going to get crushed if it goes away. Uh, Jonathan says, I've had a good experience with I trust so far. So far. As soon as I signed up, I got a call from them and answered my questions. Makes sense. Uh, Nick Lucal, Kevin, the question was, is staking native or re of our assets? So for, for iTrust, there's no re right? They're not going to take your funds and do fractionalized cr cruddy lending, which is what Celsius did and what actually your, your uh, banks do essentially. So the staking is uh, through uh, the actual protocol. And the only staking that they have right now is Polkadot. And Polkadot, there's a great website. It's called stakingrewards.com. Wow, it's crazy. So right here, this just gives you a general assessment of how much you get. So Polkadot, right now the rewards, that's where you earn per year, is 14%. And that could fluctuate. And then the adjusted reward the yeah, Amazon road rate adjusted by the inflation of the network supply. So of course, you know, yes, you get some in, but you don't really get too much, but still you get, you know, if you're going to sell these things and price goes up, yeah, it is what it is. So with, I will just tell you this with, iTrust, uh, you can stake your ledger and they're going to get the rewards. However, and we covered this when it went live, just know that you're going to get, let's say you, you stake a thousand polka dot. And over the year, you get, now let's just say 100. I, math's not my strong suit. So you say I have 100 and it's like 15%, right? So you get 15 polka dot. Good, good. So we get 15 polka dot for the year. It's not bad, right? However, out of that 15, you're not going to keep all of that. I trust is going to charge you 20% for the staking. Before it was like, well, that's just highway robbery. All right. Remember this, you don't have to do anything. They do all the work. Oh, and then also, it is tax-free because it's in your Roth IRA. Does it change things? Well, there you go. So just remember, it is 20%, and that's the fee that they charge. That's how it is. And uh, hope that answers your question about that one. Jackal's got a good question here. What happens if you hold some digital assets that the government deems to be security? So remember, if, if the government comes out tomorrow and says, hey, guess what? Everything besides Bitcoin is a security. Okay, well, who does that affect? Does that affect you? Not really. Who's it gonna, it's going to affect, is it gonna affect the, the project heads, the project organization, and of course the exchanges that list those securities. What's that gonna mean is that they're gonna have to go to the SEC, to Gary, who watches the show, and say, Gary, okay, so we are now have a boatload of unregistered securities that we are listing. What's the process? Well, this is just, you got to pay some fines. You got to pay some fees and go through the legal process. Now, if you go, then for the protocols themselves, they're like, hey, did you know that you're dabbling in uh, un uh, unsecured securities? So your ICO or whatever that you did, just like with EOS, Beardy, uh, you're going to pay a fee. You're going to pay a fine for that. And then everything's good 
going forward. So it's going to come down to the exchanges and the project heads. Now, as far as like with iTrust, well, they're going to have to register all these securities. Does that affect you? No, not really. It's going to affect you in the long run, probably. You know, maybe some fees go up. I'm not for sure uh, from the platform. I'm, I can almost guarantee you're going to have to pay a little bit of more extra when you're doing trades, but that's it. And then Wayne's got a good point. Why does anybody seek yield on Bitcoin? It's doubled in price every 12, 20 for months for a decade. I don't think that's true. Uh, no. So I guess it depends on where you take it. So like 2017, you didn't hit that 20,000 price tag until 2020 again. So, I mean, we'll say every four years, let's just say like this. Why do you want to keep, keep yield? Because they're greedy like me. And that's just the truth. All right. What else did I miss? <laughs> After these last few months, I have trust. Everybody's got trust issues. You got to be careful. And, you know, you got to say, well, does this seem legitimate? Do I want to do this? Is this something that I, is this my risk tolerance? It's up for you to decide. I just tell you what I'm doing. And that's it. That's what I'm doing. Thanks, Mari. I try. Yeah, Johnny says, just custody them yourself. You can do it, but just that, just know that when you, you know, when you cash out, you got to pay long-term capital gains to, to the government. It just depends what you want to do. <laughs> Tardy to the party. I never heard that. It's funny. Trust wallet is hot storage. Don't trust it. I, I've had a lot of people say that they like the trust wallet. I, I never used it, so I, I can't tell you. This is where I want the conversation to go. I, I hope so. Yeah. It depends on your own tolerance. Like some people are like, nope, I don't want to do it. And I'll be honest with you. If you're here in crypto, you have somewhat of a risk tolerance because let's be honest, crypto is pretty damn risky. I mean, in all honesty, you could just get into T-bills, right? You can just get into uh, treasuries. Just go, I like 3%. That's it. Won't keep you up with inflation, but that's okay. At least numbers go up and that's it. But, uh, you know, then there's the other people who say, well, I got massive risk tolerance and I'm going to dump everything into Shiba Inu and Dogecoin. Just depends. A lot of people out there, a lot of options for you. Yeah, I do the same thing. <sighs> yeah. If it connects, is, it's actually a good point. What actually could bring down trust is what people want to know. Sounds like the, the my risk is uh, with who they use for storage and how are those entities going to play out for the next 10 and 20 years. I guess it depends on, well, it, it, you have to understand, though, that let's just say, for instance, that Fireblocks is like, we don't want to do this business anymore. Okay. Well, it's not like you just lose everything. You just transfer everything. It'd be like, it's like when your local credit union says, you know what, we're, we're going to shut down. We just can't compete with these big banks like Wells Fargo and all the different ones that are out there, JP Morgan and stuff. So we're going to shut down and you have to move your funds within, you know, 120 days or whatever it is. That's happened to me before. And uh, you just move your funds to another bank. And that's it. Uh, Lord Smith says, Grayscale Bitcoin is in a trust. They dot. Need to do proof of reserve. It's all been verified. Yeah. Proof of reserve is actually a good thing. You know, I think I should bring that up to Kevin. Well, I have no poll, but that'd be interesting, right? Would you trust I trust more if they if they went through proof of reserves? I think that is a dumb question I just asked you, but I, I have to ask the question. If let's say they had proof of reserves and they could show you, you know, how much crypto they have in uh, 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 Coinbase custody and Fireblocks, would that make it better, easier for you to say pull the trigger, or not really? Let me know. Oh, this is a great question. So Ruben says, with I trust, is the gold and silver a crypto? I want to confuse it's gold and silver for real, or is it gold silver represented by crypto? That's a great question. So it is actual gold and silver. And what I need to do, let me show you. I trust. Because it's a, remember it's, it's a, it's a Roth IRA account. So it doesn't just have to be crypto. They just specialize in crypto. That's why they have gold and silver. 
And that's why at the end of the conversation, Kevin was talking about an REIT, a real estate investment trust or fractionalized shares of, of real estate. But, you know, because it's legally, the Roth IRA is a Roth IRA. There's no like a separate designation for a crypto Roth IRA per se that I'm aware of. And that's why they have gold and silver. But there was, let me go back here. Because they actually store the gold in the Royal Mint, the Canadian Royal Mint. I just want to make sure I find it. Okay, here's Coinbase and Fireblocks. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, whoops, how it works. That's what I was looking for. Precious metals. Ah, okay. Physical gold and silver. I trust capital use vault chain investment grade gold and silver held physically at the Royal Canadian Mints with ownership managed via a secure blockchain distributed ledger. Ah, okay. So you own it, but the, ter the, the terms of the information is actually on a blockchain. Okay, how I trust gold and silver is that? Simple. Physical gold and silver, not a security derivative future or other financial contracts. Clients buy and sell 24 7 from their personal dashboard, blah, blah, blah. Fully backed by physical gold and silver at all times. Okay, there you go. Okay, that was a good question. I mean, I forgot about that one. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, let's see. What I miss? JT's got a good point. Kind of surprised the proof of reserve is not a standard thing already. Hopefully that will be the way. So we were talking about this yesterday in the DCA show. Did you guys watch the DCA show yesterday? Woof. Spicy comments. But one of those things I didn't make it abundantly clear was when we talked about regulation. Because when we talk about regulation, yes, there are the, the U.S. crypto exchanges are regulated in some way, some some way uh, by the U.S. government, but banking license and things like that, whatever. But uh, one of the things that that is not, and and we've seen this issue, is with uh, commingling of funds, and that's what happened with FTX. See, FTX, they took your crypto and everybody else's crypto, and everybody's, and they just put in a big slush fund. Okay, here's all our here's all our money. Well, it wasn't our money. It was, it was my money, your money. Well, actually, I didn't really use FTX. It doesn't matter. And uh, I used it a little bit. It's true. So all that was commingling, and then they would make the loans and do whatever they want to do, and they would ship it over to Alameda Research, which is their investment arm, and they would invest in the projects, but it was all your crypto. So what I was talking about yesterday was, you know, and Gary... I hate to say this, but it's uh, here's a very unpopular take. But Gary Gensler did did warn that against uh, Coinbase when they tried to come up with their earn program. He said, look, and then also he had a big question about commingling of funds, and now we know that's one of the downfalls. So I said, okay, they're regulated right now, but there's some there should be a standard in place for all exchanges, just like the basics, right? Like if you're going to do loans, you got to have a separate entity for that. If you're going to do uh, yield generation, you have to have a separate entity. You can't just have everything just slushed together. You have to have uh, not commingling of funds and just everything separated and also be able to, and even Jesse Powell, uh, former CEO of Kraken goes, you guys, he talked about the SEC and government screwed up by not giving them guidelines and, uh, and a managed process. And I think that's the basics. If you can get that part, cool. And then the next part would be this, which is if you want to have the gold standard, healthcare does this, industry, uh, construction works uh, does this. And then also like there was even a gentleman, Gerard, I forgot his last name, but he, but he did a tweet. He goes, he'd worked in um, uh, nuclear power plants for 30 or 40 years, a nuclear engineer. And he said, we are regulated by the government, but to keep the gold standard, we would all self-enforce these different rules on, on the different uh, nuclear power plants. And that would, that would raise our levels. I don't see why exchanges can't do that. So like here, what JT is saying, the proof of reserves is a great start by CZ Binance. Great. Just the bare minimum to get us in. And then the ones that go above and beyond, you know, I would sign up for those. 
and say, oh, okay, well, here's all the transparency. Not only did we are going to give you the proof of reserves, which is our assets, here's our liabilities, and here's how we structured everything, and here's how it all works, and and here's how we're you know uh, not commingling of funds, and, and here it is. If you can have somebody like that come out, but you have to let's just say that they say, well, our rates are a little bit higher because of that. Like instead of paying 0.1% for the trade fee, now you got to pay a half a percent, 1%, 1 percent, 1.5. I would pay that. I would pay that just to not have to deal with the ambiguity. However, I would still keep everything on my ledger as much as possible. And yeah, Louis says it right. Uh, proof of liabilities. Perfect. Did I miss something? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, let's see. The only... Panda pie. The only real trust is full transparency. Yeah. Why would it be risky to be honest? Exactly. Honesty and proof reserves. Where am I going to announce the communication? But it's lucrative. This is the thing that I always question. Like if you have a great business and you want to be here 10, 20, 50, 100 years and you want to leave something to your kids and grandkids, why don't you just do the right thing? Just do the right thing and, and, and go forward. See, but that's the problem. Like this is one of my flaws. I always think people are going to just do it like how I think they're going to do it or like me. But my wife reminds me that uh, they don't understand. There's people that are just going to steal and, and, and pollute and, uh, you know, make a quick buck and leave. I guess a, a slow, a slow nickels better than a fast dime. It's an old thing. It doesn't matter. Stunod says, why am I now hearing about FTX having no Bitcoin balance? You have to understand there's a there's some nuances there. As I understand it, the no Bitcoin on the balance was uh, right. That was a, a snapshot of a spreadsheet uh, after they did the chapter 11. And they actually, uh, they actually have it, but uh, I'll have to take a look at the information again. As I understand it, they do have Bitcoin, just not as much as they thought they did. <laughs> is USDC safe? Or SAFU, as CZ Binance says it. Uh, it makes me not want to be in, in stables, the different things that are coming about. So I don't know. But uh, isn't it funny how you know we talk about how great crypto is and, and how it is to get out of the system, yet you know, where do you want to put your money? I'm not putting in stable coins right now, especially Tether too, even though Tether has stood the test of time so far. That's it. Ah, means that a good point. Why can't there be something like the FDIC insurance for exchanges? Who's going to come along and, and ensure that? That's a good question. George says, how does staking work on iTrust? It's pretty simple. You just log into your account and then it'll just say, because they only have one now, Polkadot do you want to stake this? And you say, yes. And are you okay with the terms and conditions? And you read it and you figure out, oh, it's 20% for a fee. Sure. I'm not going to have to do anything for it. I get 80% profits. And that's pretty much it. And they stake it for you. Thank you. And I think that's all. So Dr. Payne says, self-direct IRA. I'm able to stake from my heart wallet. That's true, but I believe you have to be a corporation. Maybe Dr. Payne is doing that. This is for other people who may not have a corporation or just don't want to do it. Uh... <laughs> it's funny how everyone is so focused on honesty, securing your crypto, yet no one wonders what the traditional banks are doing with their funds. We, we know what they're doing with the funds. It's called fractional reserve lending. Where you put in 100 bucks, and they say, thanks for 100 bucks," And then they just create another 99 loan it all out. Double E says, Rob, can you do a video on to track your cost basis? Yes, I will do it. And I just got to find the right program that does that. I've heard, I've had some some people say, this one does it great. I don't know. <laughs> Joe, stop spamming. All right. I think that's it. <laughs> that's it for today, everybody. I got to get out of here. Today's, yeah, Dr. Payne. What just that, what, Payne, how do you initiate that self-direct? Like, I'll, I'll stick around for this one. I want to know this one. And also, 
Has anybody found a way to, to, to bypass any uh, centralized exchanges? I, someone told me that you can sign up for true USD, link your bank and get that stable coin and then just go through DeFi and buy everything that way. I want to see if that's true. I can't do it because I'm in Puerto Rico and Texas and Panda pie. <laughs> Panda pie says, this is my first real bear market. I'm amazed with the change of speech about crypto when Bitcoin fell from 20K to 16K. But we know where it's going in the end. Up. Yeah. I mean, I kind of felt like this was going to be The language has, has been pretty tame, uh, quite honestly. In 2018, 2019, you understand there was no real institutional investors coming in. There was no talk from the White House of regulating and even, you know, doing anything with crypto because it was laughable. And people did think that it could go to zero. And uh, now it's not the case. And I'm just surprised at just how many, how many exchanges uh, collapsed. And I don't think that's the last one either. I think the ones that that don't have a good business model and just were doing a quote unquote circle jerk of just transferring funds all the way around everybody to get to, to, to gain yield and doing crazy loans, those are the ones that are going out. Or who yeah, who gave loans out to other other industries and then they got sucked up by three ACs and FTX and all done. Oh, okay. That's how we did it. So we did a trust. Understood. Understood. I know it's a lot of, uh, a lot of lawyer meetings. So yeah, you can do a trust and do all those things, but trust me, trust me on the trusts. It gets a little bit uh, confusing, and you got to set it up with lawyers, and you got to do it the right way. And some, so, and, and inevitably, someone's going to say, "Yeah, I did it myself." You can, but just know there's a lot of loopholes and or a lot of uh, legal trip ups if you don't do it right because you got to have it for your kids. And that's it. And that's it, everybody. I got to get out of here. I got to go play. Time to go to the beach. Go play a little volleyball today. It'd be fun times. That's what I love about Puerto Rico. There's always a game somewhere. Anyhow, that's it for today. So look, thanks for sticking with me for an hour on a Saturday. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about are time sensitive. But that is it for today. Thank you again for stopping by. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow I got uh, my man Tom Crown on. We did an interview about uh, taking profits and, and his way of doing uh, trades. Pretty interesting. Adios.